Brian Balls are your host for Make It Artsy. This is the place where you can unleash your maker spirit using your favorite materials and tools. Assemble a little of this and a little of that to add artistic flair to ordinary objects. So urban artist Seth Apter is up first. He's a New Yorker, which are my favorite kind of people. And you've got a great project which actually involves finding some objects on the streets of New York City. Exactly, Julie. One of my most favorite things to do. So I want to show you some of the things yeah. that I found. That's is the ba this is the basis for the project. So you can use anything to create what we're going to make here today that has some sort of sturdiness to it. So I have some examples here. These are old found objects. This is a beautiful old spoon with a wonderful patina. I was going to say, the patina. rust and patina on it's so nice. And some of the metal objects here that don't have the patina but just have the beauty of the metal. Um, some wood, organic things that you find maybe in your garden. I thought um, these were matches at first because of the red tip, but I assume they're like paint looks that way. or they're, something. Looks that way. They're actually from an old uh, vintage game that oh. I have. Those are my leftovers from them. And then this is my most favorite object to use. These are actually, and you'll really appreciate this coming from New York, these are actually the bristles from street sweepers in New York City. So cool. I follow along and collect them. When you, once you know that you have the objects that you want to use, you're going to make your choice. You're going to take them in a grouping, and you're going to make a bundle. So you can see the samples of what I've chosen here, and I've even included a paintbrush. Are there any rules on how many or how much, or is it just whatever you totally feel Totally like? up to you. Okay. It's all up to how you want to make it in terms of the level of thickness or in terms of how long or short. And are you trying to make them all approximately the same height, or it doesn't matter? It, it really doesn't matter. So For could me, you incorporate something this short into something that is a bigger bundle, or you all, wouldn't do only that? Only if you let it come off the top. Mm -hmm. Because if you put it in the center, you're going to see, you're going to absolutely lose it. Okay. And you'll never see it again. So what you're going to do is choose some fine gauge wire, and you're going to just begin to wrap. Your goal here right now is not to make anything look pretty. Your goal here is functional. It's about moving the wire up and down across the entire piece so that you create a bundle that actually sticks together. And I noticed you're using a very thin uh, gauge of wire that you're actually able to cut with scissors. And also, I find it interesting that you're working with several smaller pieces instead of one very long piece. Is there a reason for that? You can do that um, in terms of the different um, smaller pieces because it's great to actually use different wire. Ah. So you can see I have a whole sampling here. I'm not going to bother doing it right now, but I like to have lots of different wires, thicknesses, variety. It makes the final product look so much nicer. So it's both practical to use the wire and decorative. Exactly. So here's an example, another one that's already bundled together. You can see it's quite sturdy, and that's really the most important aspect of this. You don't want it to fall apart. Once you have it wired, what you're going to do is go to the thread and the fibers. I brought us some sampling here. You want to make some choices that are interesting. So you want different colors, you want different textures, and you certainly want different thicknesses. You're going to choose any thread you want to start with. Do you pick any particular colors or anything like that? Are you thinking very hard about like, oh, brown and sort of, what is this, like a, a lighter brown, I guess, and a yellow go together? Could you, would you, or would you just grab for green, orange, purple, yellow? I do both. Sometimes okay. I have a, an aim, and I want something to resemble perhaps the area that I'm in, if I'm doing it on a travel, mm -hmm. uh, on a travel vacation. And if not, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, not worry about it and just grab and go. How do you end it? Do you tie it in a knot? Do you, like, what are you doing I'm going to add a little extra wire if need be. So you can see this one is all threaded. And if you look oh. very closely, you see I added some wire at the top to make sure. That makes it so, so easy there was to no not problem have at all. to knot it at all. You, you don't even have to think about that. You can wrap the wire over it to sort of adhere the thread. Correct. Once you have it like this, mm -hmm. then you're going to go and you're going to add your embellishments. Really, anything with a hole works. So think beads, think charms, think findings. You know what? Findings. I'm always losing earrings. You could totally totally use one earring that you have left over, right? Exactly, exactly. That would be perfect. So this is an example of one that's been done. Basically, what you're going to do is you're just going to take your wire, you're going to cut off a snip, you're going to begin to loop it around, and then once it's looped around and it will be sturdy, you're going to choose the piece that you're going to add. Again, anything with a hole will work, and you're going to thread it right through. And when you thread it right through, you're going to be able to just spin it around, wrap it around your object, 
and you're good to go. I feel like this is a project that would be great to do with kids, take things from a travel of some kind. Would you mind adding another bead, or is it okay if I play along? I would and love add for you to add a bead. Extra here? So cool. Does it matter which wire Not I use? Not at all. No, nope. okay, this is a very fun. forgiving project. This is awesome. It's so now, you, I know you have ribbon in your hands too. I is do. there something that you're going to use that for? Well, what I like to do at the end when I'm finished mm -hmm. with all the beads is I like to add a little bit of heaviness to it. it everything mm. is so small there, so I like to add something that will ground it, and I choose um, some ribbon or some fiber. Um, I can take some, some thick thread or even some yarn, and what I will do is once I have it done, is I will take, while you're doing so that, cool. that's beautiful addition, you have a talent for this already. <laughs> I will just wrap the, uh, the fiber around, something like that. Um, and it's really simple, it's, it's an easy knot. If I feel like there's just too much hanging off, mm -hmm. I will snip, mm -hmm. or I can even uh, snip it right down now, the middle. Did you fray the edges it. of this, or did, did this ribbon come like that? I did just what I did on oh, wow. right there, just I frayed split it. it. Um, and you can add as much or as little as you want. One of the nice things about this is that when you have it done, mm -hmm. you're gonna see, this is a sample that's been complete, you'll see that it's a standalone object. Some, some people think of these as blessing sticks or ceremonial sticks. Yeah. They're just little, little works of art. It's nice if you're traveling and you're like me and you pick up things along the way on the street in the shops yeah. to then take it and to be able to make a memento. And this would be an example. This is one I made in Taos, New Mexico. It has the colors and has some say, objects. Of course, I was going to say that blue turquoise color immediately kind of fits, says New Mexico fits to with, me. With that, with that. Uh, well, I just love area. all the texture and dimension you've gotten on this set. It has like the hard and the soft. It has color. It has so much texture. It's really interesting. And you've even integrated it into another piece because you said, well, this is a standalone. Yes. You have a piece over here in which you've wrapped. I exactly. think that's a key. So this is a vintage key. I've made a, a work of art, and what I've done is I've wrapped it. I've wrapped it a little bit more simply, but that's the great thing about this is that you can choose to go as, as creative as you want or you can go quite simple. And in the end, you're going to have a beautiful object that represents either the uh, work that you've done or the places that you've been, and in the end, you will really um, have a good That is piece. super cool.